Hi, I'm John Mahar with Reset. We're a nonprofit that puts scientists, technologists, engineers, and mathematicians in classrooms to work with students and with youth groups in the community. Uh, so at this point, we're doing uh, some videos of STEM activities you can do at home using objects that are typically found around the household. Today, we're doing a experiment or an activity rather uh, based on the scale of the solar system. So what you'll need is a 36 inch length piece of paper about two inches thick and uh, this can come in packaging with deliveries uh, or if you don't have that you can use a newspaper and cut it into strips and uh, tape it together one yard long I um, happen to have a roll of this because I've done it with other children and I'm going to use the white one because it's easier to see. So at one end you uh, just mark that, uh, a vertical line that's to represent the sun. At the other end uh, put a P which uh, represents Pluto. And then uh, you should take the marker and mark along this spectrum a dot which is where you think you would find the Earth, from the sun end to the Pluto end. Now we're going to take the piece of paper, we're going to fold it in two, make a crease, and where that crease is, is where you have Uranus. So I'm going to mark a U there. like that. So it's halfway between uh, the Sun and Pluto. Now we're going to fold it as it was before and now we're going to fold it once again so that we have quarters. And at the new crease closest to the Sun at this end um, that's going to be Saturn and at this crease um, closer to Pluto, that's going to be Neptune. So mark them with an S and an N. Then, um, we're going to fold the sun end um, to Saturn, which is right here at this end with the S, making a new crease, and that new crease is going to be Jupiter. Okay, um, now um, fold the sun to meet Jupiter, the sun end to meet Jupiter. All right. And this new crease is going to be called, is where you would find the aster, asteroid belt. So I'll just mark that with a B. Small B. Okay. Lost my cheat sheet here. Now we're going to fold from the sun end to meet the asteroid belt, the latest crease. And that is Mars. Mark that with an M. Okay. <clears throat> then you fold the sun to Mars. This is Mars here, the latest crease. And then we're going to fold that again. So by double folding, you're going to create three new creases. And those are the um, Mercury, closest to the Sun, Venus, and Earth. So Mercury being closest. Uh, then there's Venus, and then that third new crease before you get to Mars is the Earth. 
So that shows, I've I, uh, done this with a bunch of adults once, and almost everybody had the Earth further away towards Pluto from the Sun. But um, you'll see these first four planets are all clustered pretty close, and then there's the asteroid belt. So what is the significance of the asteroid belt? It's just a bunch of asteroids that cluster between Mars and Jupiter, and it was necessary for this experiment because that's where we wanted the fold to be in order to make all the planets fall into place. Now, if you're wondering about the actual scale, I've made this uh, 1 billion miles um, ruler. It's 11 inches long, actually, which is, represents a billion miles here. So you see, that's, there's a billion miles, and within the first billion miles, you'll find one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five planets, as well as the uh, asteroid belt. And then if you go, show that. And then you'll see all the way to Pluto if you uh, lay it out and uh, move your ruler along is uh, three point. I think it's 3.4 miles away. So that's how you can uh, show the scale of our solar system from the Sun to Pluto. Um, I'm going to now um, take another uh, video of our tadpoles that are metamorphosizing from my garden pond. And um, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be able to get these guys because once they develop four legs, they can start hopping around and they might uh, leave the pond. Um, uh, the, the picture I'm going to take here uh, shows a tadpole that has the four legs, but it still has a, quite a long tail. And I'm waiting for them to get shorter as the, uh, that compresses and the legs get longer and they get the shape of a frog. Um, but we'll show what we've got this week and I'll try next week and see if we can still show some, uh, some further uh, metamorphosizing into frog from the original tadpoles. If you go back to the original one in this series, you'll see most weeks I have shown the development of, of the uh, tadpoles uh, across the weeks. I hope you enjoyed today's activity and check back next week for another one. Thanks.